Hello. I'm pretty excited. I'm preparing for a pretty big canoe trip. My friend Kyle, uh, if you're not familiar with Kyle, he runs a YouTube channel called Burley Outdoors. Kyle's my buddy from Ohio. We do a lot of camping together. And uh, he's a couple years younger than me, but roughly the same age. So we've done a lot of camping trips together, like I said, and we have a, an awesome canoe trip planned. So in a couple weeks, we're going up north, in northern Ontario, to the Tomogamy region. It is awesome. It's amazing up there. I've never been. I've seen pictures. I've read reports. I've watched videos. It's an amazing place. And a huge part of this trip for me and Kyle are going to be, is going to be fishing. Um, we are going, we're targeting walleye or pickerel, depending, same fish, lake trout, brook trout, and northern pike. All those are in season when we go, and all those are really good eating fish. Uh, probably pike being my least favorite out of all of them, and even still, I really enjoy pike. So, any fish that we catch is going to be a good supper. <clears throat> I think that I'm going to do... This will be my fishing video, like my fishing tackle video, my my boat gear video. Then I'm gonna do a gear video. I'll make I'll make this into a series. I'll do my camping gear video, and in in that video I want to touch on more of the why I'm bringing the things I'm bringing than just what I'm bringing. In the past I've done a lot of preparation videos, and I kind of just rush through it because I've got to to get a lot of information into one video. Well, this, this, this time I'm going to do it different. Like I said, I'm going to do my food as a separate video. I'm going to do my fishing stuff as a separate video and my gear as a separate video. So there'll be three videos before I'm even out there. And then I want to make my trip video into two, two parts, probably two, try to keep them around 40 minutes each. Last time when I did eight days, one was an hour, one was 50 minutes, the videos. So, um, I understand that I got to try to keep it a little bit shorter, but still I'm going for, I'm going for nine or 10 days. So there's gonna be a lot of footage. I'm going to be excited to be filming as well. So I'm sure there'll be even more footage. Anyways, that's a little brief intro. This will be my fishing gear video. So I got a new PFD for this trip because I'm tired of lugging around the old blue and yellow ugly ones that don't ride. They don't, they don't wear well. They don't pack well. They don't look cool. None of that stuff. So I got a kayaking uh, PFD. This one's by Stolquist. Nice green, as you can see. And it's got, it's like I said, it's a kayak cut. So I guess I should tell you as well. I bought a, <laughs> when Kyle and I got back from our, our last camping trip, our eight day canoe camping trip in the fall, we stopped at this place called Swift Canoe and Kayak on the way back. And he bought himself a pack boat, which is a small, his is 13, six, so 13 feet, six inches long Kevlar fusion, open faced kayak. Basically it's a canoe. It's called a pack boat. It's a canoe, but it has a kayak seat in it and you paddle it like a kayak, but the whole top is open and it weighs 26 pounds. Like I said, it's a Kevlar fusion. It has a removable carbon fiber yoke. And I was beyond jealous because I can't afford it. I couldn't afford it. Uh, and Kyle bought one and I just felt really, really bad about myself that I couldn't get one. So in the however long, eight months that it's been since we, since we've been back, I've been stewing about that and I decided I'm going to buy one. So I sold a bunch of gear. Um, I saved a bunch of money and I was able to get one. So I'm picking my own Swift pack boat 13, six up on the way there. So we'll stop at Swift Cut Canoe and Kayak uh, in Gravenhurst, I believe it is. We'll stop there, pick it up in the morning and head the rest of the way to Tamagni. So this will be the first time I'll be paddling my, my own boat and I'll be paddling it for nine or 10 days straight, right off the hop. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, and that's again, a little segue back into my, back into my life jacket. That's why I bought the, the kayak style. You can see on here, how it's a shorter back and the mesh kind of takes up the last quarter of the back. Well, that's because the kayak seat has lumbar on it, has a back to it and you don't want to be 
pushing out. If you if this was full length, if this PFD was a full length padded like this, it wouldn't be comfortable. So they have this little uh, mesh part, and they have it's cut so that you can really move around really easily, comfortable. So you can see it on me. It's nice and maneuverable. I'm be paddling like this, with my kayak paddle, so nothing's gonna rub. And what's really cool is I have these two front pockets that actually turn into, oh, turn into tables. I got a little bit of gear in there. I have to make a little survival kit still to go in, in one. But these tables, the purpose of them is for fishing. So you can set your hook, do whatever you need to do. And you got these work, these work areas. In here right now, I've got a whistle, a fire steel, a little light, a little light. There we are. Uh, a compass, and I've got a knife attached to it. So this is just a little Swiss Army farmer. I also bought a new rod because all the rods I had were too heavy or too old and cracked. So I bought a medium action uh, ugly stick because they're super durable. This one's got a nice clear tip on it. It's supposed to be pretty sensitive, pretty react, uh, pretty uh, reactiony. Anyways, and I also got a Luz 2500 uh, 10, 10 ball bearing reel. So we will be trolling a little bit. We will be casting. I'll say we'll be trolling about a third of the time. Um, but again, casting shallows. This, this time of year early like this, that far up north, the, the fish are going to be higher up. The water's not warm yet. So we don't have to really get down too far, I hope. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get into my fishing gear and um, I'll show you what I got. Again, like I was saying, we're doing walleye, lake trout, brook trout, pike. So I've got it organized like this. This top left, for me at least, my top left, I've got my big spoons in it. This is a silver minnow with a little weedless rig on the, t on the back. Try to keep it out of the, out, get from getting snagged. Got spoons galore. I got the old five of diamonds. Uh, Cleo's, it's a little funky peach looking one, the old Red Devils, bright orange Williams, and then this one that looks similar to a perch. So we've got all my bigger spoons and a little bit of a medium sized spoon, maybe this one's be called a medium sized spoon in there. And those are going to be for trolling and also jigging a bit. So my second little compartment, I've got things like wire leaders. I've got five wire leaders here. That's for the pike and the, the lake trout. So when you're trolling and they get a, uh, they snap onto it, they're not going to snap your line. I've got a bunch of split shot, le uh, not lead, sorry, they took that out. I've got a bunch of split shot, uh, the reusable ones, swivel snaps, three-way swivels, and then a bunch of loose um, connectors and swivels and stuff on the bottom. That's just like the the uh, the little messy. Yep, that doesn't make sense. Next up, I've got a piece of reflective cord. That's gonna be my um, my stringer for all my boat. We'll be each in our own boats, like I said. So hopefully, I'll be able to sh roll, boat up to Kyle and show my stringer of uh, trout. Got a little pocket pliers, uh, multi-tool. This is gonna be useful for taking hooks out of fish and uh, just general use. I might keep that in my, my life jacket. I'm not 100% sure right now. Next up, I've got my jigs. I've got mostly one kind of jig, but I'll show you the different kinds I do have. I've got these, a lot of these white ones with red eye. And then my next po most popular one is this one, a little peachy silvery, it's a little bit bigger. And then I've got a weird orange one, one that looks like a fish head. Jigging is all new to me. I, I've not done it a lot at all. So, uh, and then this yellow one. But and then I've got underneath that a lot of the white ones still. I have like two packs of white ones in there. I got a ton of them. Um, up next is probably my favorite type of lure because you can catch a lot of fish on it. Just these spinners, right? Not not this one specifically, but all of them in this compartment. Just spinners and smaller spoons. Um, this one, I'd wait up 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 the line a couple feet with a couple split shots get to get it down. I'm gonna spin. 
got things like a Black Fury, a Meps Black Fury. Awesome lure. Awesome lure with a big old treble on it. Um, again, another one of those first ones I pulled out, the spinners. These Williams Wobblers. This little one is called a, it says Northwest on it. It's orange and silver. It's in perfect little size, a little wobbler. Another Williams Wobbler. Another little spoon, little Cleo. A bigger Williams. Uh, Cyclops. And then this one, which I just got. It's got a back barbed hook to keep your, your, your bait on it. Another favorite uh, type of lure is the Rapalas. This big old bird's nest of Rapala. So a lot of these are floaters. I got a couple divers. I'm not gonna bother trying to unhook them right now because you can see what the problem is. My favorite are these orange ones, but there will, I've not fished up in Tomogamy, so I don't know. I don't know what's gonna be good. We'll see. This perch one would probably be good. But yeah, those are all super tangled. So I'd be using these Rapalas for, for pike mainly. I imagine some uh, lake trout might hit them. Now it's into my brook trout fishing part, which if I can catch a brook trout, I can die a happy man, I think. It seems like such an elusive fish to me. But I've got a bunch of little black panthers and little meps, like eglias and number ones and zeros and twos. A lot of them have fur on them and a lot of them don't. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 11 of them. My biggest one being this one, which is a number two. Compare it to probably my smallest. This is a Panther or a Panther Martin, and that's a number two Panther Martin. So it's a little bit different, but that's probably my biggest. That's probably my smallest for the brook trout. Like I said, a lot of little meps and hoping these will work, guys. I'm really hoping these will work. Uh, in here, I've got a couple of little fake fake lures, or sorry, fake uh, bait, some scented one, little minnows and whatnot, just just to throw on the jigs, see if it'll work. And then loose in there, I've got just like little white worms and random stuff. This one, I got some pink Mr. Twisters. Last but not least, I have my. A fishing license in here that's a good thing to keep in there guys you know you gotta you gotta stay legal you don't want to be have your have your license at, back at camp while you're fishing or anything like that so you need to keep it with you um and then i've got just this is more of a random kind of section but let me pull it all out and go through it because i do like a lot of the, the lures that are in this little section my jitterbug is one of my favorite lures of all time. It's top water action. Seeing bass jump out of water for this at night on a calm lake is probably one of my favorite things in life. Honestly, I don't know if I'll get any use out of it there. Maybe some pike at night. It's more for fun than anything. But I have room in my tackle box. I'm bringing my, my frog jitterbug. Just a bigger spoon that wouldn't fit with the rest ones. This was this one's a little Cleo, a three quarter ounce. Okay, my favorite lure of all time is a Meps Aglia. There's a Meps, excuse me. There's a Meps number three Silver Aglia. There's a Meps number three Copper Aglia. There is a Meps number two. Oh, I'm sorry. There, three three number two Gold. So I got three Silver, three Bronze, two Gold. My favorite lure. I catch everything on these things. This is one I just bought yesterday. It's a nice big heavy one. Uh, it's called the Veltic 5. Super bronze, super flashy. So this is going to spin. Attract fishies, hopefully. This is a crappy little bottom bouncer I got. A little small compact one. The idea is you tie your, your line to that. You have a, like a, a swivel, a three-way swivel. You'll have your line up here. You have this down on, on the bottom, and then you'll have your, your bait out here a little bit. 
and it's gonna be bouncing along and the bait's gonna be up off the off the ground this will be bouncing along the bottom hoping to hoping to attract things but like i said i i don't think we have to fish too deep this time of year another red devil and then this little guy, this is a Canadian Wiggler. I have not used this to catch anything, but it looks to me like it would be a good lure. Super flashy. I hope it wiggles because of the name, so. So that's it, guys. That's my fishing gear for this trip. We're going to be, like I said, up north to Mogami region for nine or 10 days. We plan, we plan on nine nights, but we're giving ourselves a, a day extra because we've been very lucky in the past and not been winded too much. These are big lakes, and if we get winded and we have to hole up, we're doing a trip, right? We're doing a, a big loop. So for the first two or three days, we're still going in. But day four, day five, even day six, we're out there, man. We're far, far, far interior. So it's like, we do have to have a, a grace day. It would be nice to even maybe take a rest day if we needed it. If not, worst case scenario, if we're winded, we can, we have an extra day for leeway. We're not bound by campsite restrictions or anything on this on this trip, so it's a lot more free. It's a lot more decide what we want to do while we're there as opposed to stick to the regimented plan, right? So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited about it, and uh, it's coming up really soon. So like I said, a couple weeks. Um, look forward to a couple other videos before the actual trip videos. Like I said, I'll do a gear video, I'll do a food video. I'm just dehydrating some food right now, so. If I can get that all done, I'll get that, that other video uh, shot today and maybe I'll upload it in a few days. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, like I said, in all honesty, I've caught a ton of fish in my life, but not angling. I worked for the university and I was a research assistant in the biology department. We would catch fish every single day. We would use gill nets, and we would use electrofishing, and we would use seine nets. So I've caught trout, I've caught salmon, I've caught walleye, but never angling, never out of a canoe angling for them, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Tons of bass, tons of perch, tons of bowfin, tons of gar, things like that I know. I have, I have a lot of experience. Even pike, I can catch pike, no problem. Trout is what has eluded me, and walleye. I have not caught a walleye yet, so this trip, Boys and girls, has to be a first for me, okay? If I don't catch a walleye or a trout this trip, I quit. I will sell my fishing gear, I will sell my canoe, I will sell my camping gear, and I will sit in my home. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.